Hello and welcome. This is your GM in the Great Barrier, broadcasting from the center of your entertainment galaxy. And we are here tonight with Star Trek Adventures Broken Sword. We are in the third session of our Season 2 premiere, Bounties Part 3. Before we get things going, just quick shout outs to the usual bunch, that is to say, our other players that stream and whether you are in the archives or in the Twitch chat, I would say check out and throw follows to uh, the Overland Gamer. That is our own Joe playing Ezek Korg, the ship's helmsman. Uh, also, uh, Caligo the Blue, who is our Gorn engineer Raldar. They've both, uh, let's see, I know... Um, Joe, of course, you've been doing some fallout 76 lately and caligo i recall uh just started up some uh arc nights if i'm not mistaken yeah we're uh we're over on overland gamer we are the the streaming side of things um we started a brand new character for our build up to the fall fallout for hope um streams that start in november we'll have more information about that once once we get closer to november but uh having some fun with the anniversary release of fallout 76 and it's finally at a game it's finally a game that we're all proud to play and and it's it's a pretty pretty decent game now as opposed to when it was launched so i do want to shout out fallout rpg from uh, Modifius, if you don't want to play it on the computer, you can play it on the tabletop um, with this, a very similar 2D20 system like what we have for Star Trek Adventures. Um, so you can find out what makes you special and bring it to your table. Yeah. Besides that, I would also say for those of you interested, um, checking out Modifius, they are the people behind the Star Trek Adventures 2D20 system. They also do the Fallout system, a number of others. Uh, They've actually just started releasing actual play stuff for their Dreams and Machines system that's just come out. So that's definitely worth yep. checking out. Um, if you like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, you will definitely like that system. Um, it's as close as they could get to that system without having to pay the royalties. <laughs> so when last we left off, the Yan, uh, after months traveling across the Klingon Empire at Warp, had landed on the planet of Zethlor. Uh, on this border colony world, uh, near the historic Orion borderlands, and beyond that, an ever-expanding federation, the Yon arrived in orbit, was able to seek pretty easy clearance, and effect a... Uh, effect a landing, uh, one far easier than your first one. Uh, once on the planet, you split off largely. The party went different ways in order to uh, tend to different supplies and other needs. Uh, we followed first with the captain, who managed to reach the Den of Iniquity, a house owned by... Uh, the Orion uh, interlocutor named Desana. Um, she was able to help you guys uh, basically secure the credits that you had earned the Darsex for the uh, or for the jobs you had completed, and has allowed the captain to basically sit back with his bodyguard Dakoth nearby. Uh, elsewhere, uh, well. The, the Kazinti warrior, Wo, had followed with them, but had left after they were certain enough of being paid, as she could tend to other things in the markets of Zethlor. Uh, touring about the city, uh, on, the, uh, on this settlement, uh, you had managed, uh, some of you had managed to acquire some interesting items, uh, Raldar, for, for your part, you had first managed to successfully arrange repairs and had learned of some sort of event happening out uh, further out in a different section of the colonies. Um, the name Mastical came to mind as you uh, learned that apparently there's a contact there who uh, had some 
interest in seeing what a truly fast ship could do, and while they were particularly noting that they'd be interested to see what an antique like this could manage. The Yon definitely being uh, up there in years. Um, aside from that, you have also been picking out supplies for your uh, mutated clone, whom you've nice. come to regard as Dar. Go ahead. Yes, my, my beautiful young boy. He's growing so fast. <laughs> yes. He's... He was already so much larger than you. But... He grew it, up so fast. <laughs> in any case, uh, yes, the... Uh, so, you have uh, gone to retrieve that elsewhere. Um... Let's see. Uh, Traven and Azik have been going about the port, also seeing to resupply, in particular ensuring that food and beverage will be tended to more adequately. As between your uh, between the Nausicaan uh, uh, navigator that you took on some ways back, and the passenger uh, who may have had some affiliation with a house and interest in quietly getting him back home um, you basically uh, you were running pretty low there indeed anything that uh, you could have imbibed for that effect is pretty well drained um, at that point uh, as you had taken in all that uh, you were taking in that material and finding interesting vintages and quality goods uh, the two of you we're in close proximity to Woe and Raldar. Um, for Raldar's part, he was just ambling about. He'd taken notice of you, but not of the uh, set of Creel that were closing in behind him, um, seemingly angling towards him. Woe, too, was present on the scene, uh, but she had been distracted by the arrival of a... Another Kazinti, uh, one that she seemed to know from some point in her past. <clears throat> this one by the name of Keg. Uh, the two of them engaged in some conversation, and it seemed as though Keg might have um, tried to get across the notion that uh, she had been abandoned by the former crew as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or that there were some disagreements. Uh, Will was not buying any of it, and when conflict started to uh, rear itself, Keg actually tried to take a shot at Will whilst Raldar was trying to fend off the Creel. And although Will very nearly managed to um, score a blow on Keg, or was turning about to do so, uh, the other Kazinti fired a some sort of stunning disruptor weapon at Wo, and despite Azik's effort to intervene, had man uh, had managed to beam away with your crewmate. So, at this point, as some of the crowd is running in disorientation, others still are pulling out weapons and preparing for brawls themselves. Uh, we rejoin in the midst of a battle that is going very poorly for the Creel. Uh, so, uh, as we pull back into this particular scene, uh, Raldar, you are braced behind um, what little shelter you could find. Uh, you have already managed to pretty well injure two of the Creel that are firing your way. One of them continues to... Uh, one of them continues to stand and take pot shots in your area. Uh, Traven and Azik have uh, both acted previously. We are essentially going to enter a new round of combat, so uh, everyone is able to act again as normal, and in particular, uh, the turn order goes first to you. Um, for whomever should wish to act... Um, because it, it could be any of you very easily. 
Uh, while Woe has disappeared, uh, there are still Creel in the uh, in the local area who are exchanging fire with Raldar. So, who would like to do what would be the question. I like drinking. Anyone minds if I just start blasting? Start blasting. Am I here? Uh, oh, you, well, we can hear you there. Um, oh, I was asking if, uh... Oh, Zionel was, uh, oh. near the scene, but was, uh, not, like, immediately there. I think we'd set up as a complication that he was, uh, momentarily away from things. If you would like for him gotcha. to come nope. back now, then, uh... Would I have seen... The stuff started going down? You would have only heard it in the distance. Um, I think uh, the idea, I think, was that um, Zion all had uh, checked out a few stalls over uh, in order to look over some different goods, um, and the combat had ensued whilst um, you were away from that. That being said, it would not be too hard for you to enter the scene essentially from uh from behind basically okay so i'm behind am i who am i behind uh the creole the creole okay good to know i don't have to move right now but i am you said i can activate you do have an activation since uh you have been uh, this is the first time you've been really used in the session or rather um this is a new adventure and this is a okay. use of your character basically cool. just just want just wanted to keep that in mind Cool. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to do anything right now. I can wait until a little bit later, but okay. I can be. I'm definitely getting ready to enter into the fray. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I guess if nobody else has any objections, uh, Raldar, you may start blasting. All right. Aim minor action. Blam. Hello, kablam. Wow. wow. Okay, with a control plus security roll, uh, that is three successes. Since an attack roll with a uh, ranged weapon is a difficulty two roll, you manage to pretty effortlessly land that blow. Uh, the last time I believe you were firing these as uh, not immediately lethal shots, I think is the way that we put it. Uh, just to check, has that changed, or are you still uh, aiming to fire only to injure or maim? The, the, this is set on, you know, this is on the low maiming setting, not on the high. Set on medium situation. rare. Yeah, yeah, it's set the medium rare. Copy that. You know, okay. they, they may be starred for the rest of their life if they're poor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Creole They'll are, be fine. Creole are not particularly wealthy. Um, Go ahead and yep, roll damage for that disruptor, and that is, let's see, four, five points, plus two effects, oh. which has the vicious one, so that is effectively another four points of damage. Yep, that's going to be enough to deal an injury. Um, I'll say that, like, the, the blast that you fire out manages to cut just perfect shot like uh, grazing along the um, the rifle arm or the like the rather the trigger arm of the rifle so uh, the Creel is going to have difficulty managing the weapon that he's carrying at that point and um, as the remainder of them are also hobbling or crawling at this point just say uh, no good! Get back! Fall back! And the Creel are going to make an effort to try to escape. I will allow them the opportunity to roll. Um, because they are injured, normally that's not something that you can do, but I'm just going to give them a very difficult roll to try and escape. It is something to where um, basically 
you can intervene if you so wish, but it is this is just meant as a uh, I don't know something to try to get them out of the. I see, I see. The cowards, they're running. Dishonorable. They should die. <laughs> hmm. Yes, yes. Let's see. Where, where are the creel? I had their sheets in front of me the last time. Oh. Okay, I'll just make that work. Here we go. All right, I'll set this to a difficulty four roll for them to try and make it away. Oh, they are, despite the protests of the uh, Creel, uh, the Creel's leader, they are just not making it away. Um, he himself is going to buckle like against one of the stands and yeah, just kind of fall off to the side. So nothing doing there. Um, the turn will just revert back to you guys. Can I can I do a little a little pokey poke? Oh boy! Go you, for it. You certainly may. Uh, Excellent. So I I like to say that like as they're like stumbling by and stump trying to stumble out, one of them like turns and bumps into me, and uh, Zion all just says, "Oh, were you looking for me?" And then just shanks them. Very good. This will be an uncontested daring plus security roll. I must ask, is this a lethal blow that you intend to strike? I don't think Zanel knows how to... Well, actually, Zanel does know how to do non-lethal blows. Um, yeah, we'll make it non-lethal. Okay. Uh, since this would be a second non-lethal injury, I think that it would be considered... Um, that would be enough to um oh geez what am i thinking of it would be enough to knock them uh knock someone unconscious essentially um i will ask you to just give uh, me the daring plus security role um yep can i use my assassination focus no because i'm not lethal that's right dang that's less okay, hot that's fine you can assassinate their consciousness, right? That knocks no. them out. No, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be a nice bean and not take the the focus. Gross. I'm really downplaying yourself, huh? Oops, wrong one. Hold up. Sorry, it's kinda of freezing on me. Give me a sec. Quite alright. Do what you need to. There we go. Okay, yep. Oh, you said it was uncontested, right? It is, so you uh, only needed to meet the difficulty of one in order to succeed. Uh, so, yep, uh, as you bump into them, um, I'd say you can jog them with the back of the dagger or something of the sort um, in order to land the uh, unarmed, uh, in order to land a non lethal blow. Um, I'll allow you to roll uh, damage for that, then. Which yep. that is five, because vicious. If we, if you are willing to treat that as a bludgeon instead of the dagger, then we could make this work because technically um, it is also, uh, the knife has a deadly quality to it, um, which means... That which that makes it more difficult for them to heal, right? More difficult for them to... I thought it was more difficult to um, make the non-lethal blow. But I could be... Actually, I think I have it the other way around. I'm going to just very quickly peek into the rules and make sure that what? I don't have that wrong, because I don't want to botch this for you. I thought what? Deadly made it harder for them to avoid a lethal injury. Let's see. The weapon designated as lethal if the character attempts to make a non-lethal attack with this weapon, the difficulty of the attack increases by one. Oh! Yeah, so I think that you are thinking of intense. Uh, yes, that's what I'm thinking about. about. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we can declare this a we can declare this a bludgeon instead, since the idea was, you know, bashing them with the back of the head. 
While yeah. you lose Vicious, the effect would give you Knockdown, and I'm you okay may with also that. roll one additional challenge die if you wish. I mean, they're okay. they're not in a position to contest, so they you'd pretty much push them down even with what you have. Um, okay, I'll take that. Yep. So with another uh, with another two points of damage on that, on top of the um, four points that comes with the effect. Uh, yeah, the the Creel that are just those that are basically able to stumble um, are effortlessly, you know, you land that perfect shot right on the that like part of the base of the neck to send some of them down. If you want to add some extra flair, maybe he kicks one of them who's crawling and uh, yeah, the, the Creel are all down before you. Speaking of, Excellent. let us uh, make sure that your token is out there because I see. I then to... shoot my twin laser beams out of my eyes, uh, my stasis field laser beams, and put them into stasis. Well, Whoa! Uh, what? No, no. eye laser beams? <laughs> no, I don't. Is that serious? No. Son of a bitch! I was so excited. So yeah, um, you guys have a few mm -hmm. moments to interact with the the Creole just down here. So if you would like to uh, take some time here, then you may you're welcome to gather around. As you come with us, as you come it. on with the party, as you, as you. Okay, so yeah, uh, Draven, Azik, the two of you. Start walking towards... Are we going to Candy Mountain? <laughs> Draven, you want to go? You want me to talk to these guys? Well, I, I was thinking about aggressively negotiating with them because I did lethal damage last time and we just lost one of our friends and I'm planning on going lethal again. So if I go, the chances of us... Di diplomacy is going to go right out the window with as it goes. That's fine Fair. with me. I lean on my spear and I look down. So you guys got probably just two options here. Now, honestly, I just came here to do some shopping. I'm willing to try and convince my friends to not splatter your entrails on the walls. But I need you to help me. I need you to calm down, relax, drop your weapons, and let's talk about this. And I'm going to try and defuse the tension. Hmm. Okay, so... So hot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as I recall, um, when a... Uh, if I'm remembering right, defuse the tension, uh, that is... When you attempt to persuade someone not to resort to violence, you may add a bonus D20 to your pool. Yes. Yes. Well, setting aside the fact violence may have already occurred, um, you might at least get them in a mood to negotiate, so I will tell you what. I will give you a... I will give you the opportunity to make a contested roll, and... Purchase a free additional D20 to roll against um, one, uh, the one Creel who is sufficiently conscious um, and like able to deal with the pain. So um, let's call this presence and command to their control and command. Can I use my conversation focus? I will allow that. And I hit three on task roll, right? Yes. You managed to score three successes. Uh, let us see how the Creel does. They only score one success, so you actually generate an additional point of momentum, Draven. Uh, I will allow you to draw at your leisure. Yay. Uh, I don't know what your stake in it is, but we may be defeated and our lives may be forfeit, but 
This beast shall not leave the planet alive. I look around. Is that any way to talk about Traven? No, not you. With the one arm that wasn't eviscerated by the disruptor, he manages to struggle and point towards Raldar. That one. That one there. Huh? Kresik? What? I think that's Raldar. Aisha? Yes? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah. My apologies. Are we done killing them? Can I come out now? Uh, we're done killing, right? Zion all? Do you want me to be done killing? I haven't started killing. I like you. I like, I like having you around. You make me feel safe. Oh, I should certainly hope so. I think we're done, yeah. Alright. You may be done with us, but... That, well, we could not claim the prize on his head. Oh, we will not be Pri the last. Prize on my head. What prize? You act as if you were ignorant to your crimes. <coughs> he starts, like, coughing up, like, a bile and other fluids. It's, um, just kind of starting to sweat quite a bit from the pain. Uh, despite that, he will try to puff up his chest a little bit more as you approach. My people were able to take analysis of the outpost when the, uh, the treacherous house clutch people turned us back. They warned us of the deeds that had been done to our people there. A whole ship of innocent miners destroyed. Forced off our lands by a beast that had been unleashed. Well... From those samples, eh, those warnings they supplied, and uh, those scraps of the transmissions from inside that they recovered, we uh, we were able to sort out your genetic profile. We know it was you, and he pulls out the scanner that he was waving uh, at the. Uh, around last session. It is as clear as day here for us. You massacred my people, and we will not allow you to go unpunished. Well, well. I didn't do it. I know who did it. But you deserved it. So it's not my problem. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How much is this price we're talking about? Don't you start. <laughs> As I know, I'll just, like, at the mention of a price on someone's head, he has his interest peaked. I'm still holding the disruptor pistol. <laughs> Don't tell him the price, please. Don't do this. I mean, it begins. shouldn't Shouldn't he know exactly how much he's worth? It does wonders for a man's self-esteem. Yeah, a price on my head isn't going to help my self-esteem. But if a you price on your head by your enemies. Death, a price like on it. your head by your enemies. Think of it. Yeah, but... The ta it doesn't sit right when it wasn't me who did it, but the captain's choice. Take what you can get, Raldar. I have plenty of enemies as it is without someone else putting my name to it. Of course the captain. You the captain calmly brushes tire tracks off of his back. <laughs> of course you do, of course you do. No, but seriously, how much? 
he whispers to uh, oh. the nearest creel. Yeah, if we brought him in dead, which I would have been satisfied with. 5,000 Darsaks. 15 if we bring him in breathing, but still able to... Uh, uh, breathing and still able to feel pain. I see. Um, 15,000 Darsaks, is that a lot? I mean... You, I feel like Zionel's probably killed for less. Oh, well, I mean, Zionel killed because he was ordered to. It's slightly different. I feel like he's killed for profit for less. Okay. Fifteen. And probably enjoyed it for less. Listen, don't get between a man and a good time. Do not ruin this for me, Sean. Do not question this. Raldar? Uh, 15,000. Okay. Yeah. Alive. Okay. Are you suggesting I turn myself in so we can uh, catch Just it? saying, keep your options open. Yeah. Let's find out more on this, and we'll see if we can swindle it. I'm sure we can figure something out. Yeah, sure. 15,000. Split two ways. Let's find out some more first before we get into that. I'm not going to address the fact that you just included me out of it. But... <laughs> while, while, while they're going back and forth, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to radio the captain. Um, uh, captain Tabak, uh, a grand entrance would not go amiss. And I tell him what courtyard we're at. Uh, Captain, the over the loud sounds of the den of iniquity, which let's uh, move things over for a moment. Uh, you're, well, you have the relative quiet of a booth that has uh, allowed you a moment of uh, a relative moment of peace. Uh, at well, least back. it did before. A signal came in from um, a signal came in from Azic and is now interrupting you. Also, whoa. And, no I, can, and I can hear it over the music. Okay. Yep. As I take another big swig. What? Yeah, you're interrupting. Uh, well, um, we're in the, we're in, uh, whatever courtyard we're in. Um, we could use some of your, uh, professional leadership. Good shot. What have you done? I promise I did not have a hand in it. That's almost funny. Um... You know that 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 furball that you like so much? Cheshire? The big one? Cheshire? No. Whoa. Oh, that one. Yes. Yeah. What a what about whoa? Well, uh there was kind of a transporter and they are no longer here. And we're kind of talking to the guys that did it. So I figured you'd want to know because being a member of the crew and all, um, probably a good idea that the captain knows when a member of the crew gets kidnapped. Or I guess it'd be catnapped. You went there. You went there. And not like napping as in sleeping, I don't think. Maybe she got transported into stasis. I don't know. But yeah. He... Tabak swears very, very uh, creatively. Uh, downs the rest of his mug and throws it across the room. Says, stands up and says, give me coordinates. I'm there. I send him coordinates. On a plus side, I, just... I, did, I did discover a, a Klingon coffee. Finally had Rakugino. That's really good. But that's less important than our crew member being missing. He's already cut the channel. And has grabbed uh, 
his uh, his buddy bodyguard and uh, is stomping his way to your location. <laughs> Isaac is completely oblivious as he starts talking about uh, the coffee over the comps. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Tabak, you start making your way out of the. Um, you start making your way out of the den of iniquity. Um, Dasana not really bothering to acknowledge you as you pass out. She is dealing with other clientele at this point. Uh, and you pass out, uh, pass by the Orion bodyguard near the front who uh, just, you know, disruptor near his side is ready and watchful for any, um, any trouble that occurs. Um, Let's see. Joe, would you want to play Dukov here, or would you like me to take over for a moment? I can take Dukov. Okay, so yeah. Dukov, you may have heard at least a little bit of that over the comms uh, as you are walking out of the um, walking out of the den now. Captain, we probably better go in go in um, ready for anything. You know, as a He can be foolish, but he's not an idiot. Let's go. And yeah, just continue stomping as fast as his little non-lumpy-headed Klingon legs will take him. Yep, yep. So the two of you uh, depart from the den and find your way outside as uh, starting to move down the street so you know that the uh, you know that the coordinates are uh, probably from uh, where you are, just a few kilometers away. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to navigate these streets, uh, just going through the f- foot track. Wait, 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 wait. A few kilometers? 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. Yeah. Oh, probably then more like I had this conceived in miles. Um, and then I did translations into Calicam, so um, I guess closer it, it'd be closer to maybe about five miles, so still a distance but um, not so bad that... Yeah, it, a good 20 minute walk. Yep, yep. Um, so yeah, a decent 20 minute walk, uh, that being the situation. Um, what poses more of an issue is the loud cry that you hear uh, coming... I'd say squarely somewhere from your left. Um, As you hear in the distance. (sighs) Find me, Tabak! I would have loved to hear that, but it all broke. Yeah, that completely cut out. Would you mind doing that again? Apologies. Take two. Take two. Find me, Tabak! Is that from inside the No, that is from out, outside of the den, from your left, and in particular, from a set of Kuk Kali, uh, the Klingons of the Discovery uh, era design. And they are not particularly happy. Oh, uh, the... the... Okay. Yeah. So, uh, let's... well, I'm still. I have somewhere to be, so I'm just going to keep going. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, they. But uh, but be aware of the fact if anybody starts coming up behind me. Yep. Um, let's see. Just going to see whether this works out here. Uh... Okay. Mm. Uh, one of the uh, some of his ilk appear to be carrying a scanner of their own and the Klingon who cried out on that um, pulls one and says Ugh! just kind of gesturing around and when something beeps on his scanner indicating it uh, some sort of uh, affirmative signal. It's like, Tabak! Your time has come! Uh, 
So if they're that close behind me and they're bellowing directly at me, I stop. Slowly I turn. Step by step. Inch by inch. Yeah, I was going that far. up Niagara Falls. Uh, and who am I seeing? I am trying to bring him into view, but for some reason the tokens didn't want to manifest, so uh, yeah, let us Oh we're manifesting now. Okay. I'm I'm trying to I'm doing my best. Well, there we go. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring you guys up to size here. Um, flanked by a uh, flanked by uh, four others similar to him, um, a Kokawi uh, approaches you. He has the bearing of uh, somebody uh, of somebody just like trudging down the street in an absolute storm um, his head is mostly uh, mostly exposed or sha uh, like shaven as it were the only hair that uh, seems to grow on his face would be the eyebrows and uh, or the beard that and mustache that he has kind of coming out uh, this Tabak, you would know, is as likely that he keeps his head shaved as it is that he may have undergone the um, the restoration process, which the um, uh, which has steadily been circulating through some of the houses of the empire, and uh, that some of the great houses have allowed to their basically lesser nobles and whatnot. Um, yeah, the process well, it's also of, the same group. It's also the same group uh, pertains to the same group of, you know, fanatics that my brother ran off with. Well, the difference between those fanatics and uh, the the nobility um, is that some, at least some among them, have taken to a more... Um, they haven't taken the full sensibility. Obviously, there are some who say those that mostly sit on the High Council today. Um, the representatives from great houses have fully adopted the look of uh, essentially what has been done to um, the it, like the result. Uh, the initial results, those first stages of the cure, creates that much more sort of alien visage, something closer to what a Klingon looked like once, or at least takes you further steps away from uh, being human, but obviously has the uh, more pronounced unusual features. Essentially the more alien look of the Discovery era designs. Um, however, some of the... Uh, I would say some members of the lesser nobility have steadily been, uh, they're not completely going for what is either in vogue amongst the very extreme or the very fashionable and allow the process to, um, or they undergo some follow-up processes that allow hair follicles on the head to actually function, so uh, that could explain that uh, you know, he's maybe wealthy enough to have had at least a partial set of surgeries to re-enable that, or possibly uh, the whole smash, and is uh, just electing to shave his head. In any case, it is enough so to communicate that he could be somebody of the upper crust, or, like, relatively wealthy. Uh, beyond that, uh, he appears to have a... Uh, fairly standard like leather combat vest of the sort that many Klingons of the era wear or those that are uh, those that tend to brawl um, with any degree of frequency something to allow for a fair bit of flexibility 
Um, it is a fairly nice or well-kempt vest as well. So once again, communicating a little bit of the wealth. Um, and also complete with a partial uh, sash and uh, a sort of layered uh, pauldron covering part of his uh, like shoulder and a bit stretching down under the arm. Um, he is also festooned with other weapons, mechleths, diktaks, and a disruptor pistol at, uh, at his side. Uh, his other, uh, the rest of his cohort are similarly armed, although some have uh, rifles. Uh, but yeah, he's just strolling towards you with a uh, just an absolute burning fury in his uh, deep brown eyes. And you said he has five guys with, or four guys with him. Correct. You, you, Tobach. If you have any honor le uh, in you, then I will employ you to put it to the test now. And he'll uh, pull the mechleth from his side uh, and basically start to swear out in a slightly broken but nonetheless kind of a, a slightly more aristocratic Klingon. He is essentially throwing out um, the the verbal parts necessary to challenge you uh, in mortal uh, in a combat basically. Before he finishes that, can, would Dekoth know that this would be something the captain would want to participate in or would it be something that um, could be interrupted and not offend the captain? Who are you asking? Kind of GM, kind of you. I I think that so obviously decoth has got his own um, decoth has got his own sensibility about trying to anticipate the captain's wishes. Um, yep. I think that that is mostly a Sean question at this point. Tabok wouldn't stop him. All right. While he is uh, in his spew, I'm going to pull out my disruptor and pop him lethal. Oh, boy. Uh, the GM will accept <laughs> your threat. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a... Uh, with that disruptor, I guess... Uh, were you firing with a disruptor pistol or a rifle? Uh, I don't It's know. disruptor pistol. Okay. So then, yeah, uh, give me a control plus security roll difficulty of two, please. To be perfectly honest, you beat him to the draw because Tabak was just going to shoot him. <laughs> do we have uh, an Indiana Jones? <laughs> do we have any uh, momentum? Uh, you have, have two points of momentum. Two. I would like to steal one for a third dice. Mm. Well. And I don't have... The only thing I've got that might play into it would be constantly watching but as a focus. But the only way that I... Uh, in my head, the only way that that works is he saw him draw the Macleth and he was planning on pulling the gun and shooting him. So I don't know if that would fall into that focus uh, category. Sorry, what was the focus again? The focus is constantly watching. Hmm. So that's uh, looking for hidden dangers or uh, ambushes or traps. Yeah. Uh, I think in this case it doesn't really apply because they did not try to ambush you. The This Klingon warrior declared himself openly to you and um, yeah, made clear that he was going to uh, try to... He wanted this to basically be a proper duel in the streets, as it were. Okay. Um, Klingons these days. That's my talent. It's not going to mess with anything. Okay. Um, you said uh, 
uh, control and security? Yes. Difficulty of two. Okay. Okay, that is two successes, so that will be a sufficient shot in order to um, hit the uh, hit this Klingon here. Uh, go ahead and roll damage for that disruptor, and that is that'll, that'll do. Yep. Let's see, four, five, six plus the pointed vicious. That is seven points of damage uh, with Brackloll. And I did. St I did state that it was lethal. You did? With Brackwool, that is going to be enough to resist one point. Uh, and mm, even with the armor that he had, uh, that would be... Oh, well, I like how you're talking past tense. Well, I'm, I'm regarding it for a moment here, just to uh, see about this. Uh, I think that... Yep, so what's going to happen here, this this definitely would be enough to be a lethal injury, because the armor that he has only provides a one, single point of resistance, and the Brackloll only resists one point um, for, the, for a lethal injury. However, your foe here, I have given the Threatening 2 talent, or rather, uh, at... Uh, I don't know exact. I don't remember what they word it to uh, word it as for the NPCs again, which I was just looking this over. I think it's a special rule when it's given to an NPC. Uh, basically, for threatening to, when he enters the scene, he has a momentum pool of his own bound to him, of which there are the two points. So I'm going to expend those now to allow him to ignore the injury. Um, I, I will have it be at a cost to him, which is to say that uh, one of the warriors actually sees what's happening and jumps in front of the blast, uh, trying to level the uh, their rifle on you before uh, getting shot at and vaporized himself. So, you will say that you send one of the uh, four bodyguards he has with him, uh, you send them to... Uh, Stovacor, presumably, hopefully. I did die in battle. Um, but yeah, with that uh, with that single shot, he's just going to say, oh, um, You treacherous um, Patak! Bah! And people are... Uh, that's when the shooting is going to pick up here um, as... Some of his shol uh, soldiers are going to take shots in your direction. So that'll... Oh, joy. I think that... Um, first one's going to try and open up on... Um, open up on you there, Dekoth. So let's see. Um, set that just to... Well, I'll have them work individually here. So just two d20s here, and they're more melee spec so uh, that first blast that they let off is only going to, since they only rolled a single success on that, it is going to go just a little off to the side as they, uh, as the first one fires off a disruptor. But now uh, you are in a separate combat instance. And you are outnumbered, Captain. Yep, yep, yep. Captain, I saved you from the duel. Yeah, now we have to save me from the firefight. Yep. Uh, to give you a sense of your surroundings, as disruptor bolts begin to fly about, um, the area that you are in, like, I would imagine the Den of Iniquity, there is a bit of a square kind of around the area. There are further, uh, like, stalls a little ways around that. Um, this is enough for, like, a lot of foot traffic to be able to make it through. So you don't have immediate cover unless you wish to try and throw people in between you and them. Um, you, If you wished, you could probably 
with a successful sprint type task, you could probably make it to cover in some of the other stalls and make this sort of a running fight. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you guys are in pretty open circumstances right now. Yeah, there's like a t is there like a table or anything? Well, I flip, suppose you know, flip a table, get behind it, kind of thing. Yeah, here, uh, let me actually move this because it is more accurate to say, and I, I should apologize at this point in so far as I've been trying to get a map to work, and it has every time I've tried to uh, place characters in the setting, uh, something with. Uh, my roll twenty hasn't been working, and I, I I'm kind of a little bamboozled at the moment. Uh, it would be more accurate to say that we are outside of the den of iniquity. Um, so you are kind of in a street corner somewhere about here, outside of the den. Um, there aren't there isn't any outdoor seating or tables that are immediately available. Um, the only options would be really to, um, in terms of cover, would be to try and either make a run back for the den, to make a run for some of the like stalls and shops that are set up, um, and basically have a running sort of street battle go on. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, it would be open, or relatively open fighting. Then I'm going to try to shoot the, the guy who declared on me. Um, that would be a another control plus security roll. Uh, difficulty of two. I'm going to grab that last momentum. Well, that is another two successes, so your shot will manage to uh, make contact with the... You said you were aiming for the uh, the lead Klingon as well? Yep, and that was with the rifle, not with the pistol. Okay. I don't, but I don't have one. I don't have a rifle on my sheet. Okay, well, that can be fixed pretty easily. Let me just add that in real quick. Okay, try that on for size, Tabok. Not too good. Okay, well, that is at least four points of damage, um, what, which will what be... accurate do? Accurate uh, when you aim. I believe it allows you to... Um, it allows you... Uh, so it's not going to take an effect. It's not taking an effect now. That's okay. Yeah, the... Uh, accurate is just a weapon quality, and if you perform the aim minor faction, then or minor action, then you can. Um, it's to help you re-roll d twenties instead of um, any number of d twenties, uh, instead of just say one d twenty. Okay, why did the cough get so many dice? Uh, because his security discipline is higher than yours. Everybody's is. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Yep. You 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 have been allowed to make that change and I have offered to let you uh if you needed the time to talk about that, that's something we can definitely do. Raven has one security if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> no, that doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not at all. That doesn't help whatsoever. Yeah, just thumbs up while the uh, while the other arm is being gnawed off by a giant Gorn mutant. Uh, Alright, yep. so I shot him. Yep. Um, and the the blast that you fire out, uh, that will catch on his uh, armor, specifically on the shoulder plate, uh, or like the shoulder pauldrons. Um, you manage to hit the exact worst spot. Um... I do have to ask, was that a lethal or non-lethal shot with the rifle? I wasn't necessarily going for lethal. Just trying to make him back off. Okay. so Or knock him out, but, you know. Yep. Uh, you deal... That, that a... Knocking him out with a disruptor rifle is basically just shooting him and hoping that his own body keeps him alive. Fair enough, fair enough. 
Uh, let's see. So that would deal a single point of stress to him. Uh, which he's not particularly happy about. Um, but he's... Uh, yeah, I think with that, he's just going to try and close the distance with both of you. And uh, actually, no, he's still content to let the others uh, take the shots at you since you've elected to fire off. I, I think that he's uh, not deigning you as uh, worthy as of yet, or at least necessary. So he's going to uh, grab one of his bodyguards from the shoulder sh and like shove him forward and in his path. So... Uh, any attempt to take another shot at this Klingon is going to be just that little bit more difficult. Um, but yeah, that Kukawi bodyguard... He's using his own men as a shield? I th think that he figures that uh, at this point um, yeah, he just wants to send up the meat shields first. It's more indifference to his men's lives and... Um, you know, desire to send uh, desire to have you shot up because he doesn't particularly care for you at this point the feeling is mutual yep well that uh let's see i should have designated a shot here let's call this uh hmm. i think i'm going to have to uh flip well I don't feel right having not designated an attack, so I will say uh, I will give another roll there, and I will have that. Uh, this shot will be aimed at you this time, Tapok. Yay. Okay, that one didn't succeed. That is the the GM. Uh, yeah, the GM screwed up, missed a perfectly good roll. I I could have killed my players, but alas. <laughs> yep. So more shots going wild. Um, at this point, uh, some uh, as members of the crowd are taking cover in different places, uh, disruptor blasts are generally starting to fly about the plaza. Um, some shots breaking out in confusion, and maybe others deciding, well, maybe it's time for some score settling. But uh, the the hornet's nest seems to have been kicked, Captain, and this is this whole area is starting to devolve. Oh. Happy day. So, That's not what Tabak is saying. That's just what I'm saying. Yep. <clears throat> uh, How yeah. far away are these guys anyway, like, again? Uh, they are... At this point, they're probably a good 30, 40 paces away. Uh, okay. So is it back to us? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm assuming a disruptor rifle can't do, like, automatic fire, huh? I don't believe... I mean, in uh, in uh, narrative fluff, sure, it could do automatic fire, but if you're asking, uh, does that have any mechanical difference? Mechanically, game mechanically, no. Then you, right. so for that, you the would need a plasma repeater, which I homebrewed sp uh, precisely for that reason. Gotcha. So, you know, just... I'm going to have to probably just shoot the guy who got put in between me and the other dude. All right. So let's see what happens there. Nope. Yeah. Not doing so good. Tabak also isn't used to aiming either. Uh, yeah. So, uh, th yeah, the disruptor bolts are going to continue to fly. Uh, Tabak, would your general sentiment here be to just uh, hold the ground for what, eh, like, for the engagement, or are you making any moves to either advance or uh, reposition somewhere more strategic? I think what I'm going to be doing, which is probably dumb, but he's a Klingon, um, as I'm firing, I'm going to be moving closer. Eventually I'll get close enough, maybe I can slice and dice somebody with my Mekla. Hmm. Very well, very well. Dakoth, are you also, uh, are you closing the distance with your captain? Yes. Hmm. So, the two of you edge closer and closer to the battle as uh, this 
shot engage er, as uh, shots continue to fly slightly wild. Uh, seeing you at the lead, Captain, one of the Kokawi is going to aim another shot at you as you try to angle through their going to try and just start spraying with their disruptor rifle. The shots practically going wild throughout the plaza. And yet, with two successes, they managed to land a hit on you. Mm -hmm. My armor gives me resistance of two. No, that doesn't matter. Two, three, four, five, six, and that should have... Hmm. I actually have a thought here. All right, Tabak. Um, That's actually seven, isn't it? It is indeed seven. Resistance of two, so that's five. That is five. That's five points of stress? Five points of stress, which you're... Yep, that is where it comes after the armor, so that would mean an injury is dealed. Is dealed? <laughs> sorry. Dealt. Uh, sorry, question. brain processing. Question. Yep. Can we use a momentum to ignore uh We have injury? no momentum. No. I used and our it... last point of momentum. Oh, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. That's okay. And I'm going to expend two points of threat... That errant green blast fires out, and Dekoth, in the in the flurry of disruptor fire that uh, rains out, you see a flurry of green and of orange. And as you look back to uh, to your side, the captain is gone. What? Oh, oh fuck. God. Fudge. Dakoth? As in dead? Or just, like, not there what? anymore? I think you got transported. It's... Sorry, audio issues here. Um, no. The indie confusion of the battle is... Uh, disruptor bolts are firing off. You missed the last errant one that appears to have hit the captain. Um, for one of those wild spring shots did indeed seem to catch where he was. Uh, the captain is no longer at your side and you are fighting these Klingons now five on one. Oh god, get out of there, no. The only way to Stovokor is through glory. And I shoot back. No. Okay. One more control and security roll as you fire to, uh, aiming to avenge the captain. Mm. Oh. Oh, damn. Oh, shite. That is a natural uh, 20, which means a complication and one success. As you roar in your grief and anger over the sudden loss, you find that your shots are beginning to go more errant and wild. Uh, finally, the Klingon come, uh, from behind um, comes out and says, mm. It is over, at least for Tabok. For you... Mm. I will give you a warrior's death. And with that, he's going to charge in and take a swing at you with his blade. For as you've been nearing each other, he's able to close the distance and uh, attempt to engage you in a melee. That be daring plus security, which you may now contest to cough. Yes, I will. Uh, what do I need to roll? That would be daring plus security. I have brawling, so I can add my focus, right? You're definitely enraged enough to be ready to brawl, so yes. May Kalis protect us. Yeah. 
Hmm. So that is going to be um, one success for each of them. However, uh, unfortunately, the initiative will go, or rather the um, success goes to the one taking the initiative. So the uh, the Kukkawi, as he closes the distance with you, he swings his sword. Uh, you try to bring your own Mechleth, or perhaps you get out a Detach, uh, ready to da- er, trying to block. Uh, however you get the- however you manage to, uh, deflect, at least for a moment, the blades connect, and with an effort he manages to, uh, with an easy effort, a sort of flick of the wrist almost, he manages to circle the blade out and, uh, basically break through your guard. He's going to deliver a swift unarmed strike into your gut and send you um, with that. So let's see. That'll be... Oh, that should have also had the knockdown effect as well, but that is still going to have uh, five points of uh, stress and... A, um, uh, and that will have the knockdown effect on it, so he just perfectly, like, belts you right in the stomach and sends you back to the ground. Um, okay. The blow is such that uh, it is enough to send you back to the floor, also clutching at your gut very hard. Uh, this is one of those moments that it is a damn shame you do not have the same redundant biology as a kochach. Yep. Uh, seeing you fall to the ground and in obvious pain from the injury, the Klingon says, think my, um, To think my cousin died so easily in the schemings of such weaklings. Would it be like control or uh, med control and medicine to um, kind of I, yes, I'm hurting, but I want to. I don't want people to see it, so I kind of want to want to um, almost put on a performance that I'm not in as much pain. That would be presence in something. Yeah, I think. I, I would tend to agree. Uh, I'd call this a presence and um, presence and let's say command here. No. Okay. No. This this man has like he has landed a blow deep in your soul at this point. All right. You you uh you transport away our your uh cuz cuz Tabok got transported out, right? He's uh, not like dead dead you, next to me, right? You didn't actually see Okay. There were just flashes of disruptor bolts and lots oh. of confusion, and the captain you know vaguely was hit by something. This will be a glorious death. Um, one proud of, of Stovokor, and um, I'll try to stab him with my stab his ankle with my um whatever dagger i had okay um since you are prone i'm going to increase the difficulty of this to two so or by yep. two so uh just give me a daring and security roll difficulty three this is gonna hurt uh yeah, okay Eh, two. Nope. You try to lunge out, still hitting the ground, and your dagger just coming up a little short as he moves aside his feet. This. <laughs> I admire your display, but ultimately it is pathetic. You're not even worth killing. He'll kick aside the disruptor that's near you and just turn about. 
die. Unknown and without deeds of accomplishment. And with that, the Klingon will turn about on you and start walking away. I'm going to stand up and throw my dagger right at him. Hmm. I think that becomes a ranged attack now, so control plus security. Well, that is actually a hit with two successes, so go ahead and, and that was true of either roll, so I guess roll damage for the dagger. Nicely done. Um, Not so nicely done. Yeah. Not so nice. But only yeah. two effects. Uh, that's going to bounce off the uh, that bit of armor again. Um, and he turns around. I mean, it does have vicious. It does have vicious. Oh, that actually is yep. four points. So that'll actually that'll cut him up a little bit. Um, <laughs> you dare turn your back on a on a fight um, and call yourself honorable. He turns to you. Honor is something that eludes you, Koha. And it is something that you would have known, uh, you would have understood otherwise had you not just started uh, firing your weapon carelessly. Your captain might have stood a chance and, uh, against my blade. But now he dies. And so do you. And he's going to just unholster his own disruptor and take a shot at you. Uh, he'll... I start la I start laughing. No. You, you got him angry enough to where he... He'll fire basically a maiming type shot. Oh, uh, God. That is, yeah. Yep. Oh, that is five, six, seven, and that's vicious. That's nine points of damage. Um, so, do you, do you have anything to resist any of that? Just to triple check here. It's It says resistance zero, so. That's going to be enough then for. A uh, a second non-lethal injury. So as you as you laugh in the face of this Klingon, the battle lost. A bolt of green swirling chaos flows in your general direction, and catches you right amid the gut. The pain and your laughter are the last things that drown out as the uh, the stars give way around you. As I, as I, I, I'm, my laughter, uh, kind of turns to pain and, and Elizabeth, I'm coming home and keel uh, over. Oh dear. Doesn't sound like a Klingon name. <laughs> Were you planning a TPK in our shopping episode? This was our shopping episode. How dare you? It's Jover. <laughs> now I don't trust the beach episode. Oh, brave of you to assume I'd send you to a beach. Well, Marble. it would be a beach, but it'd have sharks and man of war. All right, so next question becomes, um, let's see. Um, I think that this scene closes out. The question is, where to next? Um... Would the doctor like to wake up, or would the um, rest... Should we check back in with the rest of the crew, who's still waiting to hear back anything right now? I just want to make sure. This scene's closing, and he's taken two non-lethal injuries, which becomes a lethal injury, right? So Dakoth is dead. I will at least say Dakoth is bleeding out. Um, if he has a value so to... Uh, 
expender, yeah. then that could save him from death here. Um, and if he doesn't, then certainly this would be an activation, um, and we could give him a value out of this. Uh, Joe? Yeah, he, he, he has no values at all. Um, I had just planned on him going out with the fight. Um, I don't know what value would go well with Is that. Is Dakov the Klingon? Yes. Don't they get the For Honor and Glory value? That would be an option. Uh, you could also do like a uh, I, I will fight to the last weapon or um, I it, like I'll uh, I will die on my feet or uh, like in victory or something like that. If you want to keep him around. If, you, if you'd like to make the executive call Dekoth dies here then yep that that honestly is. it's it's poetic that he dies in combat protect trying to protect his captain and so i mean that's that's as poetic as it gets for a, for a klingon in that case Dakoth lies in the street dying and having seemingly failed his mission so uh, with that, I guess we will have to move around to a different scene at this point. Do we want to take like five minutes at the market, uh, or before we go back to the market? Allow for a bio sure. break and whatnot. Bio break would be nice. Be Very nice. good. Let's let's take five on that, and then we will uh, go through the next couple scenes here. Welcome back, everybody. We are coming off of intermission, back for more Star Trek Adventures Broken Sword. And when last we left off, uh, the team in the market where uh, four, now down to three, after uh, Woe's seeming disappearance and uh, likely abduction, had called for assistance from the captain. Uh, he had come from the, he had been coming from the den of iniquity and was on his way to help with his bodyguard to cough, but he met with battle uh, against a Klingon uh, Kukkawi, the one of some seemingly noble nature. Uh, the ensuing firefight, as they did not learn, uh, they did not take the time to learn the reasons why. They simply engaged, and by the end of the engagement, uh, to cough, or rather, um, well, from the perspective of his one bodyguard, Dekoth, the captain was nowhere to be found, uh, indeed seemingly vaporized by a disruptor bolt. In the meantime, um, he himself met with an end, um, be, uh, taking multiple uh, hits from uh, both in melee and at range, uh, where Dekoth was just left essentially to die in the streets, but he, at the very least, may have earned his spot in Stovall Corps. Uh, unfortunately, this remains uh, unknown to you, or these, uh, the situation here has not been communicated to the group still on the market. Uh, that would be the question. Uh, Raldar, having, um, well, I guess between yourself and Azik as the most experienced warriors, um, and Raldar at least being in something of a command role, uh, have you elected to stay in the market area, or are you, um, would you be, uh, would you have other thoughts? Uh, really, let's open this up to discussion here. What are you guys uh, thinking about? Is all you can hear are errant disruptor blasts coming from around Zethmor. I see. Mm. We should probably take these lot as prisoners. Do we need them all? I mean, no, we don't need them all. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna concur with that statement. We just need the the leader. Take his honor away. His. Wait. Do you mean the family jewels? That's not what I mean. Are you sure? Because I can take those away. No, we need to save those if we need to interrogate them. Okay. I don't think these guys are that rich. 
Don't worry about it. Yeah, if there's no uh, if there's no objections, he's just gonna kill the other two. I I take it nobody else is going to object. No. Nope. All right. Uh, well, I guess the one objection to ask about Azic, would you be uh, would you want to get in on the uh, the murder of the uh, at least one of them? Of course. I hand Azic my spear. You're better at it than I am. I don't need a stick. Uh, it's a stick and with metal on it. I it's go also over a two-handed my... weapon. I go over with my <laughs> my Dictang <laughs> dagger. That was daring and security, wasn't it? Oh, you guys don't have to roll if you... Uh, well, you can if you want to generate momentum, I suppose. So that would be... Uh, yep. diff difficulty one, uh, daring plus security. Oh, you're, you're rolling for a, with a dead man there, Joe. No, it, uh, I rolled with Azix's, um... But his profile, yeah. I, character sheet, but yeah, I forgot to shift profile there. there you quite go. all right. Uh, you will... You re-roll? No, no, no. Um... Okay. Just letting you know to change the profile there. That said, uh, yep. Dekoth's uh, avenging spirit uh, helps your dagger be thrust, and you murder them for two momentum, and with one death, that is uh, one more point of threat for me. Uh, Zionel, you may also roll uh, to murder one of the others if you wish. And we don't max out it on momentum, do we? Or is it, you is max it out five six. or six? Six? Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, who would like to... Okay, Draven, you got the momentum. Uh, you may draw two it's momentum fun. in total. Oh, well. We lost Cheesy. No, I'm here. Oh. Okay. Or, uh, not che not right. Cheesy Cressic. Yeah. Uh-oh. Okay, there he is. he's coming back there. Uh, you okay, Rev? Hello, yes. Yeah, sorry, my headphones died and I had to switch over to different headphones. That's okay. Um... Did you want to have Zion all uh, kill the other one? You, If you do, you may roll for uh, Daring and Security just to generate some momentum. It is uncontested, so it's just difficulty one. Anything past that, that's your momentum. Sure. Uh, none of my focuses apply. Wow. Oh. You know, I'll still let you kill him, but um, you just did out. It was it was nothing fancy. Yeah. Very disappointing. It's a little messier than you wanted. Um, yeah. Like not enough to get it on your clothes, thankfully. But oh, um, thank God! I don't have many changes of clothes anymore. Yep. My silks. Yeah. Um, with both uh, both daggers finding their home and uh, dispatching of the creel, the last one left standing just sputters a little bit. <clears throat> well, some I could understand, but not even the Klingon pretends to have any honor slaughtering the unarmed. They died warriors' deaths. They attempted to kill us. They attempted to kill me. Better to die like this than to be prisoners. They died with their honor. You are oh. not so lucky. I care not for your Klingon honor. If I live another day, then it shall be another chance to know that a monster like you might yet die. He's actually a great guy once you get to know him. Oh, you'll meet the monster. No, you'll meet the monster. I'm sorry, what? What? What do you mean, monster? Oh, you know, the big Junior. lizard. The dad's in Tulsan Jr., what big lizard? Nobody told me there was a big lizard. There's another oh. gorgon. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, um... Uh, we'll explain that later. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll explain that you know, later. You know, he's a, a big vicious lizard man that doesn't really talk. So he's like yeah. Crescent. Yeah, we have another Dorn on the ship. Don't worry about it. He's not as friendly. Oh. All right. 
Oh, nobody, to nobody told Traven. No one's told him yet. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> also, just admiring the perfection that was uh, first Raldar pulling up some damned intimidating threats there. Um, and then Traven just utterly disarming it with the innocent, uh, what, 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 what monster are we talking about? <laughs> just seeing him go from, like, evil, like, lizard man to just backing up and being very meek about the whole thing. Oh. It's great. Anyway. I love this so much. Yep. So, um... Are you mate? Are you ready to make a move out of here? Or do you still want to wait for a word from the captain to and his rendezvous? Should we? Let's <clears throat> try to uh, Tom the captain. Okay. Um, you attempt to open the comms and. There is no answer. That's not like him. Not even a busy signal. Uh, Try to cough. Alright, yeah, to talk. Yep. Signaling. Your comms are likewise met with an unresponsive signal. This is... not good. Can you tell where their last position was? Can I engineering bullshit a reason to know where their last position was? Well, you probably, I mean, at the very least, Azik would have been able to um, discern, like, that, uh, well, actually, all of you knew that he was going to be at the Den of Iniquity, so, sorry, let me say that again. All of you knew he was going to be at the Den of Iniquity, and that it sounded likely he was making a journey from that general direction. So, you could infer that uh, he would have been somewhere, we'll say roughly westward of your position. Maybe he got tied up. Want to do a check for him while we... Bring the prisoner to our brig. I would be delighted. Try and find out what happened. We'll take these, this one back. Of course, of course. Um, I will say at this point, uh, everybody give me a difficulty two insight plus security roll. Two hazard awareness. That would apply. Sur survival. Uh, I'd give it to you. Oof. You're oh. still asleep. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's, um, that's using sign all sheet. Yep, yep. I figured as much. Um, Asik, you may also roll if you wish. Um, thus far, we have successes for Traven and for Raldar. Uh, Asik does not quite succeed. Uh, Zionel complicates and has no successes whatsoever. Um, first, let me ask uh, Zionel. You've received... Narrative. A Okay. Um, Not so fast. So the the two of you are going to notice uh, coming down the way uh, that, and like from that roughly westward direction, um, the streets have begun to clear out a fair bit. Uh, as it, that happens, uh, things have cleared up a little bit more, and you can see other figures coming down. Your hope that it the captain might be one of them is dashed when you see a group of Orions marching down the street, uh, and they all appear to be armed with disruptors that they have presently out, and all of them appear to have uh, other devices in their hands, uh, apparently reading off scanners. Oh... Uh. They call indistinctly in your direction, and uh, 
I, I think I'm going to say that uh, they, they just start running down the way as the, uh, the complication emerges. Uh-oh. The complication. Oh. I'm going to say for the complication, they've gotten a fix on you. Fucking... You might want to make yourself scarce as quickly as possible. I can... Yeah. I'm gonna head back to the ship. I'll try to stall them. Yeah. Okay. Um, as... As I'm going up to meet them, I would like to, if this is allowed, I would like to spend my val my new value that I created. Which one? Which is, is until a better offer comes along, protect your meal ticket. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I like it. Um. And I am going to pass a small data chip to Raldar. And it has the frequency. I'm going to create an advantage. It has the frequency of the tracking device that I stowed into the captain's armor one day when I was polishing it. I see. Very well, very well. So, uh, Zionel, you leave off the you leave off the data chit, which as he will find out uh, will confer that advantage, and uh, start making your way towards these gentlemen. Um, for uh, the immediate group, if you would like to um, get the uh, take yourselves and the prisoner out of here, I will ask for a roll. This will be a fitness and um, a fitness and security role, and I'm going to say that because he is both very injured and very uncooperative, this will be a difficulty of three. I see. Help him. Have other people help you. Call All for right. aid. One of you two help me. <laughs> Who's the most fit? It's as a as a help me carry this idiot. Okay, I can give you a hand. That's why it's only. That's why a help is only one D for one hand. Or I'll do that. <laughs> Raldar scores three successes. Oh well, that was a one. So, yeah. Uh, Helpful only single, one. Single D twenty there, Asik, since you are assisting. I'm sorry, I should have said. Uh, seven still a success, so you are going to be able to get him up and start him moving out there. Um, while this is going on, Zion all um, you approach the Orions, uh, and they're on the on the move. I have, of course, stowed my knife. Yes. Just want to make sure I'm now walking toward them with a knife, John. Um, gentlemen, gentlemen, is everything all right? Is there anything I can help you with? They look amongst themselves. Keep to your place, shopkeeper. We uh, we have a uh, we have a bounty to seek out. A bounty. Yes. Apparently, uh, apparently some Creel are, uh, managed to scrounge together enough marks to actually take out a um, nasty reptilian thing. This wouldn't be the 15,000 Darsec bounty I overheard someone talking about, would it? You've got an open ear there, shopkeeper. 
I have an ear for coin. It all makes the same noise in my coffers. And a tongue running pretty rapidly. And we got, oh, our sense, uh, our scanner here has got a fix. It's going, uh, and it's going uh, away from this place quickly, so. You leave it aside and we'll go to collect our bounty. Uh, let me check something here real quick. All right, I will, can I do an, an insight check on them of some sort to try and get a read on them? Um, you certainly may. Um, what are you trying to discern about them? How easily they can be bought. Hmm. Okay. Uh, insight plus command. Um, negotiation? No. That's not a good focus for this, is it? It would do better when you're buying them. Right. Uh, can I spend a momentum for another die? If nobody has an objection. Do it. I will give you difficulty two on this. Which you three dice, three successes. Three, yep, three successes on the board. Can I just put that back? Actually, well, you know, actually, I realized uh, it ought to have gone up to difficulty three anyway because of uh, fan uh, phantasmas uh, increase the difficulty redeem. So I will allow that uh, that still succeeds. It just does not net you back the momentum, unfortunately. That being said, uh, you can discern from this sign all. Um, these are hired guns going for the nearest opportunity. They're here for the 15 grand, really. They're probably thinking that they'll take the 5,000. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I suppose I can let you go about and shoot yourselves out of 10,000 Darsecs. Mm. Um, they start walking, uh, they start walking past you as you say that, but with the 10,000 drop, the lead Orion stops and says, And what exactly is that supposed to mean? Please. Three well-armed and armored men barreling down the street. You know this is going to end in a shootout. And, well, three to one, the odds are in your favor, but... You're going to kill the mark. Yeah. Maybe. But that all depends on him and how good of a shot we are. Well, if he's worth that much money, and if the Creel of all people were able to put that much on him, do you think he will surrender to you? I've started to kind of slowly walk with them. So that it seems like I'm still um, letting them go, but I'm dictating the pace and slowing them down. Fair enough. Um, so, Like, I'm not trying to seem like I'm stopping them, so that they still have a, a sense of they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So, I'll... Let me reorient these tokens just a little bit here. Well, frankly, the you know this uh, uh, it seems like it'll probably be a difficult uh, difficult paycheck to 
catch, at least in its full amount, but if the Creel really got that much lying around, and if they're willing to give it, uh, give it to us for whatever remains of this hulk, so long as there's something of its uh, genetic material for us to assess, I'd still call that a pretty good day. Hell, probably better to just uh, vaporize it and take the discounted rate. Unless you've got a better way to go about that. Like I said, coins are all the same to me at the bottom of my coffers. And I, well, let's just say I can navigate these streets a little more easily than people who stand out like you do. No offense. Sooner or later, more people like me, who are talking, who will notice you, are going to try to stop you and talk to you and slow you down. And they're going to get away. Whereas me, and as I'm saying this, I just kind of pull back my jacket so that the leader Ryan can see the like three or four knives that I have along, like just tucked in along my side. You thought I was a shopkeeper. You definitely got the I, look, but you got our interest. I can get places you can't. I can navigate through these crowds. And now, for... Well, let's see. Dead is 5,000, split three ways between you. Alive is 15,000. 2,500. If I can catch him alive. You can... Let me do my magic. Because I can't take, I can't restrain him alive. I, and he gestures to himself. I don't have the build for that, but I think I can slow him down long enough that the real muscle can take care of restraining him. One of the arrives behind him, so, uh, like gestures with the sensors of to say, you know, they've, they've still got a fix, but it's uh, getting fainter. And the lead just turns to, says, "Right, you can. Uh, you think you can slow down this, uh, slow down this particular mark. You, uh, you're not gonna stop us from uh, keeping going, then, or are you trying well, to insinuate why, it's not- why would I stop you? I'm just saying that if you follow too closely, he will panic." I still need you. And if you want the bigger payday, you need me. Okay. Give me the presence plus command roll on this against their insight plus command. Okay, I have the talent which is bargain. When negotiating an offer for someone during social conflict, you may reroll a d20 to convince that person. If necessary. Oh. Okay. Well, you will be rolling against their. Uh, let's see. With insight and command, they score two successes. So the difficulty that you need to beat here is two. My negotiation focus definitely plays into. So it comes into play here. Absolutely. Um, what do you think, guys? Two dice is good, or do you want me to buy a third? Go for the third. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Almost always go for the extra die. <laughs> I'm gonna re-roll the the zero. And that gives you three successes on the board. Oh wait, that was my presence in command is what it was supposed to be. Well, inside and presence are the same, so it's fine. Okay. 
So, your your pitch works over them, and the lead thinks about it. Says, "All right, you're you're sufficiently slippery. Then, if you're as slippery then as you are silver tongued, then perhaps you can catch up to them before we can, and keep them slowed down and distracted." But you keep them, uh, you keep out of our firing uh, lines. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to be in much of a position to catch that bounty now, are you? Or your part, anyway. Of course not. I do a elaborate little little bow, and then just slip off into the crowds yep. and make my way back up to the rest of them, yep. knowing that while I did not stop them, I've at least slowed their advance enough that. Uh, Yep. we might be able to gain some ground. Yep. In which time, uh, you've also managed... Uh, they have managed to leave these set of stalls and continue their advance uh, with whatever further methods you take to slow them down. Uh, Zionel, they will uh, regroup and try to get a fix once more on their scanners uh, following just a little bit slower behind as they continue their pursuit. Uh, let's see. So, the four uh, the four that were immediately in that group, uh, Azek, Traven, Raldar, and your one remaining prisoner. Uh, oh yeah, the prisoner that you are managing to uh, bring along. You, uh, yeah, you are basically struggling to, uh, well, you were trying to move as quickly and carefully as possible to get through these crowds here and, uh, or probably take more of the back streets in order to find your way, uh, to, uh, like, through the stalls. Uh, it is still a good bit of walking, and there is no shortage of chaos and noise around as, uh, people are starting to, or, well, some people will pay you mind, others not so much. Perhaps seeing a uh, slightly bloodied and burned creel, there might be some who figure that you are just carrying a bounty of your own. Uh, but, uh, I would guess it probably, over the course of uh, several minutes as you cover more ground, uh, Zionel, would you like to try and rejoin them uh, or would you like to try and rejoin them or keep at a distance? Um, I will not entirely rejoin them, but there is a point where I'm like navigating the back streets and stuff where my path will intersect with theirs. And so I'll just kind of walk by them as I'm casually, nonchalantly making my way through and just catch their attention quickly and just say, well, I've bought you some time, but you should get to the ship quickly. They're still coming. Understood. And then I just keep going off in the direction of that little flow of traffic. And I'm just kind of following along the back alleys and back routes, keeping an eye on them, but not getting directly up next to them. Um, as you pass, uh, you pass by, uh, going through the, uh, going through the different stalls and transiting through the marketplace, uh, I'll ask you just to see if you can keep ahead of the Orions, um, to give me a, uh, let's see, let's call this a, uh, fitness plus security roll one more just to see whether you can keep ahead of the Orions to reflect some of Zionol's work I'm going to uh, actually allow for a second assist uh, the yeah. two of you are going to do the fitness plus security roll Zionol will uh, let his uh, fitness plus command roll come into play uh, or okay. rather uh 
We'll say presence plus command in order to reflect that. I'll, you know, I'll actually give you a choice. Zional, you could either elect to give them the assist with your uh, dice there, uh, or you could uh, increase the complication range of the Orions, if you so wished. Ooh. Well, would I would just be increasing it by one? Yes. It is also worth noting you guys do have one point of momentum from... Yeah, we did get a momentum back. Yep. Okay, let me draw. Um, I will assist. I will throw in my assist. Um, can I pitch? Can I pitch? Daring in command? I'll allow for that. Okay, so I'll assist with daring and command. Yep. And then Azix assisting again with fitness and security, I'd imagine. Yeah, I can do that. And then Raldar's making the roll. Mm hmm. Fitness and security, correct. Whoop! Right, bro. That is one success from Raldar. Nothing from Azik. And then one success from... Uh, one success from... Uh, what's his face? Sorry. Uh, Zynal. Zynal. Yes. Thank you. So that will... Uh, that gives you a total of two successes on the board to keep the forward momentum going. Um, and let us see how the Orions do. I'm going to have them... I'll just roll them as a base uh, squad. I'll only roll it on the uh, basis of the two D20s there with their fitness plus security. Woo! Um, but they score no successes whatsoever, so that will be two momentum gained by you. Uh, Traven, draw at your leisure. Uh, I feel like every shopkeeper and merchant that sees them walking by is like trying to stop them and figure out what they're doing and hoping they're not coming to bother with their illegal activities. Probably, I would suspect. Uh, so, yes, the... Uh, see here. Uh, you managed to traverse the area easily enough, um, finding the, it, like, shopkeepers occasionally stopping you, and it does slow you down a little bit, but I think, Raldar, your presence manages to uh, at least scare some of them off. Not everybody wants to ask uh, a Gorn or at least a an imposing creature such as yourself, which is uh, not commonly seen in these parts. <coughs> I see, I see. Yep. Uh, and so, the four of you will steadily uh, advance until you are near the very, uh, like, entrance of the compound. Move uh, screens over here, just to the general sort of map. You are beginning to approach the uh, initial sort of area of the stalls, where it seems as though there's a bit of a kerfuffle in and of itself, as there is uh, quite a large group of uh, people about. Um, this was already a fairly crowded area. Uh, there's a lot of the more overpriced type of stalls. As much as this place is a tourist attraction, and that's a very loose statement to make, uh, the area is a fair bit crowded, partly it seems by what appear to be a number of uh, various armed groups, uh, some Nausicaan, some Orion, uh, some species that aren't immediately recognizable, others Klingons of all stripes, uh, that appear to be disputing with a small handful of people in what appear to be uh, official, like, 
garb of some sort. You would guess, I'd say Azek and really Raldar, both of you would recognize these are likely local militia, such that the colony exerts any imperial authority. They probably would have something here trying to keep a peace. Uh, also among them appears to be a group of Kukkawi that are... Uh, slowly, like, making their way towards an exit. Uh, they seem to be disputing with, uh, amongst the group, and uh, one of them, a bald warrior with uh, lightly scorched armor, um, possibly from some sort of disruptor blasts, is also, like, working his way through. Uh, it's worth noting that the front of this, uh, this, like, area of the encampment is a little bit fortified. There are security guards in place, uh, like Orions with uh, heavy weaponry of their own, who were just kind of, you know, people that kind of keep the peace in this area. Uh, but it seems as though there are a, a good number of hired guns otherwise around. I see. How far away from we are the ship? Uh, walking, you would probably be a good, I'd say, still a good 20, 30 minutes. That's with your uh, passenger. To the what about a dock. dead sprint? Oh. Uh, at a dead sprint, you could probably shave off some time there, but... Uh, I doubt that your uh, prisoner is willing or able to do so. We could leave this guy and fuck it, book it. While they're all arguing. What do you think? Running is not very honorable. Yeah, well, we might not have a choice. I just keep heading to the ship. He chooses to interfere. That is his problem. Is our friend wearing like a cloak or something? By chance? He is not. The the Creel they they tend to be the sort that like to show off their big muscles as much as they can. Zainal, do you have a like a piece of cloth that we can wrap around Raldar's face? Considering the use of scanners, I don't think that'll exactly be helpful. But they don't have their scanners out right now. Airplane. You do have the momentum on you that if you so wished, you could create an advantage of some sort. An advantage of some sort. Interesting. A fight breaks out. There's one idea. Uh, and all of you may discuss this above board if you so wish. Just in case the in-character discussion does not feel like it's flowing. I mean, the advantage that comes to my mind is that someone gets... You said there's like the local militia or whatever yep. that's here, right? They get a call that there was just a shootout in the street and there's like two dead Creole they have to go and investigate. Yeah. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Yeah, they I'll, just get pulled I'll, away. I don't think we have a problem with the militia. I'm worried about like the Orions and the other Klingon groups. What are those? 
Those are Nausicans. They, uh, some of them are, uh, they're some of the armed groups that are about. I'm just, uh, making people visible here. Lord. The advantage is going... it's time for Junior's walkies. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Guess you haven't tried to talk to the ship yet, have you? Ooh. Ropra, what's the current state of the ship? We're coming back quickly. Uh, oh, um, hello, Raldar. This, uh, <laughs> yes, this is Ropra. Uh, we have just been loading on. Uh, the uh, remain, uh, some remaining supplies. Uh, hull is still in, er, uh, partially being patched up. Um, ship is in, uh, momentary, uh, low power mode, but systems, uh, secondary systems remain functional. We might have a bit of emergency, so you know, get get us to stand by. Oh, all right, all right, all right. yes, sir. Yeah, I sure thing. Um, it it's, it's everything okay? Is is Isaac there? Isaac Vopra is asking for you. Lucky. Yes. Uh, soon to be captain. I, I would not be that presumptuous. Uh, do you, uh, we will get the ship up to a uh, ready condition. I will sound a uh, warning to the rest of the ship. Uh, I can also uh, stand by. Uh, do, are you in need of sending the uh, doctor your way or... Would transport uh, would transporters be required? Oh my God! Where's my arm? Oh wait, no. Um, I'm fine. Uh, anybody else need a transporter or a dock? I mean, if we can get to a secluded place and then just transport out of here, that would be so much easier. All right, sending our coordinates. Um. Where's where's the nearest place we could transport out? You might be able to get something arranged from here. It's a slightly tricky angle just because of the um, like the geological nature of the planet. Line of sight would be better for something like this. I'm going through atmosphere, but I I think that the transporters could conceivably help you out here. Or at least it was until we spent two momentum to find the perfect angle for the transporter. Hey, Ooh. yeah. Hey, let's yeah. do that. Get the hell out you, of here. You find a local transporter pad uh, that is, or a localized transporter pad that um, is meant for ships that cannot land and uh, is like more of a premium sort of thing. And conveniently, Zionol is already chatting up uh, the person overseeing that. Of course I am. Hey, Pooh Bear, how you doing? <laughs> hey, buddy. Yep. The, uh... <clears throat> the Uridian is like... Uh, the Uridian uh, looks to you. Ah, yes! Oh, uh, I remember you. You were the person that arranged those rather nice silks. Uh, to come my way. They made an excellent gift. I'm so happy for you. So very happy for you. Now, about that favor that you, uh, you know the one. In return, I did give you a discount after all. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Uh, I can, uh, if, you, if you have a little pad here or a uh, rather... A, Ship to, I can beam you to. I can get you there uh, right quick. Yeah, the um, and I give give the Yuri in the registry, whatever the registry of the ship is. Yep. Y'all, um, 
me and my friends here, and you didn't see us. The logs didn't see us. Oh, wait, us? Have, oh, oh, oh. And it's, uh, I presume you've already waved over Raldar uh, mm-hmm. as a contributor. Well, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, those looks were very pleasant, so I will, I'll definitely allow for that. And don't worry, I have a line on some more. Well, you've said all I need to hear. Uh, best alert your transporter operator, we're about to give you the smoothest, uh, De- uh, deconstruction and uh, matter transmission you've ever experienced. As smooth as Tholian silk. You bet it is. <laughs> he uh, deflates a little bit as he turns around. <laughs> yep. As I'm making my way back, can I do a scan of the people? Uh... Yeah, sure. Reason and uh, science, if you please. Looking for anybody that pops out. You said what in reason? I'm sorry. Reason plus science, if you are trying to affect a uh, light scan. While this is going on, I will ask somebody else to roll for the ship's uh, engineering and structure for transporters here. Uh, Traven, the only one that, uh, I will say that your sensors detect very similar scanning beams in operation from the, uh, the people that are about, uh, that are walking about the, um, the compound, as it were, um, or the, the entrance to the settlement, but the, there's a group, uh, the only group that seems to be moving off of this would be the... Uh, Kuch Kawi, which itself is a little rare at this port, uh, as he just seems to be taking steps back towards a, what you would guess to be a ship of his own. Uh, but yes, with that, uh, the audio will come over the line uh, from your communicator. Activating transporters now. Bringing you in. And with three successes, that is a difficulty two task right now, so you gain one point of momentum. And the five of you will dematerialize from this pad here. Let me move a few. Okay, where is the transporter room? That should be. Ship set, transporter room. Okay. So, the five of you will uh, <coughs> materialize. Excuse you. Or bless you. There we go. The five of you materialize in the transporter room of the Yon. Uh, Croker, after disengaging the beam, looks in your direction. Oh, who's the Creel bastard? Where, uh, where are the others? Prisoner, can you guys take him to the cell block? I'm gonna go see if me and Vopri can scan and try and find the captain. And woe. Captain and a cough. Uh, with that, Croker is like, clear the pad. Stand by, stand by. Might be able to get a lock on. Uh, I can get a lock on some of the comm panel or er, the comm signals. I've got one now. I, I've shit. I've only got one of them right now. Vopri, oh, um, please conf- uh, Vopri, I need you to confirm a sensor log for me. Mm. Uh, copy that, stand by. Scan the biosigns at these coordinates. 
And Vopri will attempt to run a scan. Mm. Some some life forms in vicinity trying to focus sensors. Mm. Uh, nothing nothing direct. <sighs> and um, Croker will smash his uh, hands into the console. I've only got one signal. It's the cause. And he just shakes his head. Bring him, bring him on board anyway. We don't want him dying in the street. So. Croker will have with the with the pad clear he will engage the transporters and moments after uh, uh, moments afterwards uh, the golden orange light uh, curtain that comes with the transporter beam engaging will bring Dakoth on board see uh, materializes, he lays out flat on the transporter panel. A terrible disruptor wound, uh, having just thoroughly, uh, like, gouged through his guts. But a smile on his face. Jesus Christ. Would any of you aim to do anything here? I go wake up. I go to wake up Cressic. Just leave the room. So you make a me, run. Me, 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 me. <laughs> me, 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 me. Yeah. Traven, as you walk out the room, uh, Croker is uh, probably the first down there. Um, and. Sets his eye, uh, sets his thumbs over his eyes to uh, open them. Uh, Joe, you want you want to join me in a good bit of screaming? Wrong. Yeah. As you leave the transporter room, you just hear the beginnings of a Rah! from Rah. at least a couple of the Klingons in the room. Yes. Um, ah. Cheshire cat. Rar. Yeah. Rar. I guess it would have made sense for Raldar to uh, join in with that as well, alerting the alerting Stovakora warriors coming. Um, Indeed, he did. But yes, uh, elsewhere on the ship, uh, Doctor. I think we have a moment to pop by the now modified sick bay set. So let's let's do that. Yeah, I got to see this new sick bay. Oh my god. It's so pretty. Yes, welcome everybody to the new sick bay that I built up. Uh, and the door uh, you don't register it immediately, but the door opens and um as Traven en enters through. I think I know you're sleeping, but you gotta get up now. Traven. As he slowly <laughs> sits up. Uh, do you go towards the doctor's office, or do you wait for him to come out? Oh yeah, I spend as much time in there. It's basically my bedroom, too. <laughs> Have you still got the spear? Are you, like, knocking on his door at this point? Yeah. Excellent. Yep. You, I kind you... of just look and cock my head at Traven holding a spear. That's not That's not normal. Yep. Uh, when, so when it kind you... of spurs me to get up a little bit faster. Yep. Uh, when you go... Uh, when the door opens and you find yourself uh, 
You find yourself face to face with Traven carrying a spear. Uh, one absent of blood, but nonetheless an earnest look on uh, the Trill's face. What happened? We were attacked. All of us okay. by different things. Okay. Captain's missing. Well, got transported out. And, uh... Oh, dang. Out of game. What was his name? For some reason, I can't remember. Oh. Dekoth. 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 And Dekoth is in the transporter room, but he's no longer with us. He was with the captain. By himself. I see. I assume you want to inspect the body or something. I don't know. Yes. Let's go. Um, you go. I'm going to I'm going to help vote pride do scans and whatever he needs. We need to find the captain and well. We will. So, uh, who's in charge now? One problem at a time. They're doing the chant in the teleporter room. You might want to head that way. I'll head my way to the bridge. Fine. You do what you need to do, Traven. Glad you got some rest, Doc. And I head out. With your... I... Oh, go ahead. I grab my equipment and head out. And as you move to react with grim resolve your feet uh, clattering along the deck plating another of you is feeling the first time in a while the hard sensation of metal deck plating this against your face is something different something slightly smoother and slightly more The arrangement is different than any that you are used to. Your surroundings are dark, which you realize is not a function of your eyes not working, but of the, uh, of the base illumination. you steadily ga uh, regain your senses a voice calls out in the dark so it is time for us to see exactly of what use you will be And, you know, I think that might actually be the best place to cap off, unless you would, uh, unless you would like to, uh, include any rejoinder, Captain. Actually, that seems like a perfect spot to do the, to be oh. continued. All right. Then, as, uh, yeah, in that case, we will leave it off. That will be where we leave it off for the night. So, yep, for those in the archive, this is the Bounties Adventure. We hope you enjoyed and uh, that your bloodlust is satisfied. If you ever want to catch one of these because games... Because we didn't enjoy it and our bloodlust is satisfied. 
There. Yes. Hey, you, you got some kills in. Uh, but yes, if you ever want to join us live for one of these games, we run them 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Wednesday. Uh, they will be in the archive in just a few days afterwards. We hope that you enjoyed, and if you want to keep up with these, you can uh, come follow us on Twitch as well as here on uh, YouTube, here in the archives. So uh, until then, this is where we will leave off. Thanks and have a good one.